Hi guys, I'm just filming a video from my phone today. I just thought of something um, the other day that uh, vanilla seems to be like the most popular note and sort of always will be. I don't know if, if it's maybe this, not the same for men, but I find that um, a lot of my fragrances have vanilla and I really like it as a note, but I don't like it so much as a dominant note, like the main note. I don't have so many vanilla perfumes uh, in my collection. Uh, they normally like they have, I have florals with vanilla, I have uh, ambers of course with vanilla, but they're the, maybe the main thing in an amber is, you know, like tree sap and uh, balsamic notes and then the vanilla is more of a supporting player. And I really, really appreciate good vanilla. Like, you know, how vanilla works in Shalimar, it's not like a vanilla perfume. I mean, I wouldn't call it that. There's so much more. It has. It's a whole composition and vanilla plays an important part. But recently, um, there have been some releases uh, that, that you know, feature vanilla as a dominant player. Um, and I have tried a few of them uh, now quite recently. One of them is Vanilla Powder from Mattia Premier. And I, I know I've talked bad about this house uh, before in this channel. Um, I do find their, their fragrances in general to be a little screamy. Um, at first sniff, they, these perfumes make a really good first impression, and so does vanilla powder. A vanilla powder have the, has a nose of vanilla absolute, coconut powder, palo santo, and white musk. And the palo santo, I think, gives off a slightly smoky vibe because I get something like a, a feeling of like roasted marshmallows. And so maybe that is the smokiness coming through. Um, but in the long dry down, I find that it's kind of, it smells like vanilla with a hint of coconut, and it's like, I get kind of like a something really familiar, like this is a lotion that I used to use, or like a, I find it maybe a little bit young for me. I don't think it's quite my thing. Also, I did try um, Pistachio from DS and Durga, uh, which is not, you know, marketed like a vanilla perfume, but um, a nutty perfume, and it has also like a good dose of patchouli, and it has cardamom, and I would say that I did try these side by side, the vanilla powder and the pistachio, and I wore them for several hours and I thought they were really, really similar after a while. Maybe um, pistachio is a little bit less sweet and a little bit less potent and maybe a little more natural smelling. Uh, vanilla powder was really going on strong like hours into um, the, the, the fragrance journey, so to speak. But Diaz and Durga have another release uh, that features vanilla as a dominant note, and that is Deep Dark Vanilla. And that one I haven't tried yet on skin, um, but like just sniffing it, I think it smells kind of like baking vanilla, you know, like the vanilla extract that they use in the States uh, when they bake that's dark and it has a little bit of boozy, booziness to it. In Sweden, we do use just like a vanilla sugar. But this has kind of a, um, I mean, I looked up the notes and they're like, there's some kind of fruity moss in there, like a note I hadn't seen before. And it also has a note of hay, dark patchouli. Uh, what else was in there? Let me see. Um, cypress. Um, I've written something here that I can't even read. Oh, it had vine. So I don't know, like, I, I think it would be interesting to try it on skin. I, mean, I, want, I want to try everything that's new, even though I typically don't gravitate towards vanilla perfumes. I do enjoy wearing them. Um, and another perfume that has vanilla in it that's not, like, released this year, but is, you know, this brand Hermetica. I have a discovery set from them. Um, it came in these little, uh, it had quite a few fragrances in there. There are some good ones. I'm going to talk about these coming up, but I'll just, no, I'll just uh, mention the vanilla one now. I, ha I wore it yesterday. I wore it a few times. And it's, um, according to the blur, it's called Vanny Night. And the, the, the house is called Hermetica, with an, with, it begins with an H. And um, the ones who, who uh, started this house are called John and Clara Mo Molloy. And they're also the founders behind Memo Paris and Flora Q that have like more Japanese inspired perfumes, but now they have this one and these are alcohol free. So if you are looking for something like that, I can recommend this house. I think they have a pretty good price point. Um, still, I want to say that I'm not, you know, um, collaborating with anyone. Um, someone did actually give me this, but he runs a company where he just got this from them as something to potentially maybe sell in his store. It's kind of one of the bigger websites. So I'm not like running his errands. He just wanted to know what I thought about this. 
Um, and he, but he didn't think it fit in their, uh, in their offerings. They mostly sell designer fragrances and then they have like Zerzhoff and something else. So I did actually accept this for free. <clears throat> but I'm not even gonna say, you know, what company gave to me and they don't even sell it. So I felt that this is okay, you know. So, uh, but it's, it's alcohol free. So they're like oil based. So you can actually rub them into your skin and they're moisturizing. But this particular fragrance, Vanny Night, was created by someone called Philippe Paparella Paris. I don't know who this is. It came out in 2018. Uh, and according to um, the blurb, it has black leather, jasmine, amber, saffron, oil, and vanilla. And it does remind me a little bit of Desired from Elisir, which I really, really like. Maybe it's the saffron. The, the, uh, the leather is really, really soft. Like I wouldn't have been able to say. Uh, it's kind of a pretty Middle Eastern style vanilla. Very, very easy to wear. Um, like if I would compare it to something like Ani. Like Ani's really heavy and strong and there's a lot going on. This one is more simple. Mm, oh, so yeah, it has jasmine. So it's a little bit floral, a little bit like um, ambery. Um, and vanilla is quite dominant, but I, but I mean, I really, I like it. I like it. I just wouldn't buy a bottle. I, I find that vanilla is not interesting enough. Um, but I really, now I came to think of Harvest Mouse from Zoologist. That's a vanilla and I really like that. So maybe I am a, a vanilla girl sometimes, but there's something else in there going on. Maybe it's the saffron that I'm really enjoying in, in Harvest Mouse. Perhaps. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. But, and then there's Amber B. There's another fragrance in this collection called Amber B that has, I mean, I get vanilla from it too. I mean, all ambers have basically vanilla. <clears throat> but this one is, this one's a little bit heavier on the honey. Um, let's see, powdery notes, bergamot, woody notes, amber. But what I'm getting is honey and tobacco and a slight booziness. So, I mean, it's not my amber. It's not like my favorite. I think it's, it's good. It's a good fragrance. It's just not, I don't think it really comes with anything new. And I don't really like those that feel tobacco-ish. It's just not my, not my vibe, I think, so much. Uh, let's see what else I've been trying. Oh, yesterday I <clears throat> I wore uh, Amber Had Room 14 from Histoire de Parfum. It's a real classic and I had, I used to have a decant of it. Um, that one kind of starts out herbal um, with nutmeg and thyme. So it feels a little bit masculine, like a fougere almost in the beginning, and then it kind of dries down into an ambery vanilla experience. Um, there's some rose in there, some sandalwood. It's, I mean, it's a really good classic amber. But if you have a good amber in your collection already, this one probably, I'm just guessing, will not, you know, add anything new. You don't, you probably don't need it. And I didn't need it for sure. But I mean, it's still going strong. It came out in 2001. It hasn't been discontinued. It has a high rating on Fragrantic at 4.26 out of five. So that's pretty good. Um, it was created by two perfumers. I've never heard of any of them. Gerald Gislin and Magali Senequier, something like that. Never heard of them. This one guy, the second name I mentioned there, I'm not gonna try to say it again, has only made, he only has this one perfume in the Fragrantica database. So I guess the other guy is kind of the main player there. And then yesterday, yesterday afternoon, I wore uh, La Belle Hélène um, from MDCI. I've been really curious about exploring this house more because I really, really like Chez Palatin. And I've tried, um, what's that fragrance called? It's like a, a more masculine oriented, Invasion Babar. Uh, it's, it's too masculine for me, but I really appreciated the quality of it. But this La Belle Hélène is, is um, has been out since 2011 and it was created by Bertrand de Chafour. And I, um, it is, it's a fruity, it's a fruity Chypre. I mean, it's, I usually don't like fruit, but I think if I, if I'm gonna wear a fruity perfume, I think I want Bertrand de Chafour to have created. I think he does fruit. It seems like he knows fruit. <laughs> and there's so many, this one reminds me a little bit of, of a perfume. I think I mentioned in my last video called Verde de Persia. Um, that one is also like a fruity experience that wouldn't be my typical style of perfume. Neither is this one, but that I also like really like and I appreciate the quality. Um, this one has like lots of different fruits. Pear, um, it's actually based on 
The inspiration came from the French dessert. La Be it's called, that's called Belle Hélène. And um, that's made with pears. But then he's like kept the pear, but skipped kind of these um, excessively sweet gourmand notes. So it's not, he's, he combines it with other things. So there's pear, tangerine, lime blossom, and aldehydes in the top. And then osmanthus, which gives, it has kind of like an apricot-y, leathery vibe. Oris butter, mirabelle plum, ylang ylang, hawthorn, and rose. So there's some florals there too. And the, the base has like licorice wood, oak moss, sandalwood, musk, myrrh, vetiver, amber, cedar, and patchouli. I mean, I could not pick all these out. They're, it's really soft and really well blended and it just kind of smells good, if you know what I mean. It's a good perfume. Um, so, I mean, different florals from Verdo de Persia, uh, but, and different fruits, but kind of the same vibe a little bit. So that one has like green apple. This one has pear. That one has like cassis. That, oh, that's actually, I think the leaves of the black currant bush. Let me see what else this one had. Um, I should, I gotta look this up for you. It has apricot. They both have osmanthus and apricot and rose. Um, they both have patchouli, musk, amber, I think, too. Patchouli, musk, and amber. Yeah, so, that, so there are lots of notes in common. So it's no coincidence, probably, that they're a little bit similar. But I do, I'm kind of learning to appreciate fruit. I think the reason I haven't really liked fruit is that it's so common, like, in the designer world. Like, everything you pick up basically is a fruity floral. And I just think that's so boring. Like, and I don't like peachy and berry-like fragrances, like raspberry and... I just find that, I mean, I'm sure it can be good. It can be good probably. Um, and I did try something with a raspberry just like recently. Let me see what that was. It was something that I actually really liked. Oh, I haven't told you about this one. Another one from MDCI, I bought two samples. And one was this one, La Belle Hélène that I just talked about by Bertrand de Chafour. And the other one is called Vepre Sicilienne. And now I haven't looked up what Vepre means but something from Sicily, uh, created by Jean-Marie Foguier, and in, it came out in 2009, but this one is a fruity floral, and it's powdery, and it's really nice and natural smelling ingredients, but a little bit maybe, a little bit boring, like it's a little bit soft and kind of like, oh, this smells like a perfume, kind of that feeling, um, but I really think it smells natural, mm, Maybe it's a little, it's a little too designery, maybe a little bit too vintage style, but it doesn't have any like heavy, um, like heavy oak moss or it's not aldehydic. Does it, let me see if it has aldehydes. No, it doesn't. But in the bottom and in the base, it does have raspberry, um, peach, osmanthus, raspberry, plum. So kind of lots of fruits actually. Uh, and a little bit of coconut and clove in the base. And then it has all these florals in the mid. It does have oak moss in the mid actually. So I get, but it doesn't have that feeling of like a real heavy vintage. You know, like when you spray a vintage fragrance, like you can, you know immediately it's vintage. Like the first few minutes, it has that kind of, it's a challenge. You have to wait for the vintage to kind of like settle down. I think these are much more commercial, like they're made to smell good right away because that's how people typically, you know, spend money on perfume. They'll go in maybe a tax-free shop or they'll go into a perfume store and they want it to smell good right then. They don't work with the testing like, like I have learned to do, but like someone maybe who owns like five perfumes, it has to be good right away. So they, they really work on the opening. And I think the opening, um, oh, I've written here that the coconuts were not really detectable. No, I agree. I, I don't really think, it's not a coconut fragrance at all. It's, it's more like mixed florals, um, oh, I see that it has Lily of the Valley. I didn't think that the Lily of the Valley was so overwhelming. It's not my favorite note. I think you guys know that, the ones of you who follow me. Um, but I mean, this, I would rather buy something from Chanel if I want this style, like powdery floral feminine. Um, I would rather buy like Au Premier, number, Chanel number five, Au Premier, or maybe La Religieuse from Serge Lutens uh, that doesn't really have the fruit section maybe, but it has that powdery, sophisticated French feeling to it. This one, I mean, considering the price tag of MDCI, just not worth it to me. And I feel the same way about La Belle Hélène. I really, really like this fragrance. Um, and even though it's fruity, 
I think it feels like it's really high quality. It feels really natural, but it's too much money for what you're getting. It doesn't excite me. It doesn't intrigue me, I would probably say. But I think that definitely um, if you like vanilla, you should check out dark, deep dark vanilla um, and vanilla powder and pistachio. And I found it interesting about pistachio, and I agree somewhat. Some people on Fragrantica compare it to Angel from Thierry Mugler, and I really can see why. Um, I wouldn't have thought of it myself, but this one, by the way, smells completely different on paper, so I really had to put it on my skin to be able to smell it. And the cardamom and the patchouli, quite prominent. It made me think a little bit about Remember Me from Javoy and Starlight from Zerzhov, but when I smelled it like this, and I read on Fragrantica that it reminds quite a few people of Angel, I can see what they're talking about, because Angel, when Angel, I mean, Angel is the, is, is really, really beast mode. It really, there's someone in the dance community that wears it and I can really smell her coming, you know, like from many, many feet away. And it's so strong and it's so like, it's like chocolatey, vanillic. It's so heavy, like it's, it's so heavy. Um, this, if you like Angel, but find it difficult to wear and to get the right dose, maybe this one. Pistachio from DS and Durga might be an alternative to Angel. Um, I mean, I kind of had this hate love feeling for Angel. Like I wouldn't, couldn't stop sniffing. Actually, I think I bought like a body lotion from Angel sometime and that even was really potent. Um, I don't know if I used it up or what happened to that body lotion, but I'm not going back to Angel. There's so many better things, you know, than, um, than Angel these days. But um, it did make me, all, this pistachio also made me think of Patchouli Noisette from um, Les Indemodables. I haven't tried them side by side and I don't think they're identical. I don't know if that one has so much cardamom. Um, and then I, it, I also thought of Cacao Porcelana and I wore it later that night, but they are not similar. Cacao Porcelana, porcelana is more dry, not so sweet. Uh, no cardamom, I don't think. At least it's not anything that I pick up on. It's more patchouli, cacao dryness, and it has a little immortelle, and it has, God, I love that. I still love my cacao porcelana so much. Like, I think it's such a good fragrance. And I, I guess I'm just not a, a true vanillic kind of girl. So, um, yeah, well, those were, I just wanted to check in with you guys and, um, and tell you a little bit about what I've been wearing, and vanilla is still rocking, right? Do you have favorites within the vanilla field to recommend or where vanilla at least plays an important part? Let me know.